All right, the Oilers make it 12 straight victories in a 4-2 win over the Seattle Kraken. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Oil Stream post-game show. Tom Gazzola with you. YouTube Trev holding things down back at the EST studios alongside Zach to come. And uh, we'll actually hear from Zach to come. I think he's going to make his debut. I don't know if he's gotten a look yet or even had a chance to crack a mic on our station in his, what, week and a half? as our practicum student, but we might actually hear from him soon. Uh, Matt Cassian will be joining us as well. And uh, we're going to get to his commentary as he breaks down the game as the orders get that uh, dozen victories in a row. Of course, uh, you can hit us up via the nasty chat as well as our text line 780-218-9999. And I can see the nasty chat is going strong. And then the uh, text line is also, ah, it looks like it's hopping pretty good so far as the Oilers make it 12 straight victories. All right, let's get to the game story from this one. And uh, we'll break it all down with Cass coming up shortly. This one did not start particularly well for the Edmonton Oilers. In the first period, a lot of times the, the Kraken would the zone and managed to get by the Oilers defenders. They looked a little bit flat-footed. A couple of times Bouchard and uh, Matthias Ekholm were the ones that were uh, victimized, if you will, and that's what happened with Ely Tolvin in his 12th of the year. Absolute laser on the breakaway from Oliver Bjorkstrand. Great pass by Bjorkstrand to make it 1-0 at 949 of the first period. Then it would be Jared McCann, another really nice shot. Uh, by McCann, who's a good goal scorer. His 18th of the year from Eberly and Gord at 13-32. Two-zip Kraken after one. But the Oilers would storm back. And it started with Warren Fogle scoring his 8th of the season at the 37-second mark. And uh, Dreisaitl and Evander Kane pick it up the assist. Then Dreisaitl would get his 22nd on the power play to tie things up at 438. Zach Hyman. And Ryan Nugent Hopkins with the helpers. And then before the period was up, Vogel, his second of the night, ninth of the season at 738, 3 2 Edmonton after two. Dreisaitl and Kane with the assist. That line had itself a night. So those that were worried when they saw Evander Kane was getting elevated to the Dreisaitl line and Ryan McLeod was coming back down and be like, what, what are you doing, Chris Doblock? No. Looks like it worked out just fine. All right. In the third period, the lone goal coming from Zach Hyman on the power play. His 27th of the year from an absolutely brilliant feed from Connor McDavid. Drysaddle, the secondary assist. Give Drysaddle four points on the night. Give the orders the 4-2 victory. The goal coming at 17-22. At Shots on goal, 36-27 in favor of the Edmonton Oilers. Face off 68-32 in favor of Edmonton. The power play goes two for five tonight. Of course, that Hyman goal coming with Gord in the box. The, uh, what was it, the, the charging where he jumped up at uh, Matias Ekholm. And uh, the Oilers capitalized on that one. Uh, the PK, five for five, really aggressive. Good sticks and lanes, good movement, taking away the middle of the ice for the Kraken's power play. And uh, an effective five for five. Uh, hits, 36-11, favor of Seattle. Block shots, 17-10 in favor of Edmonton. 13 giveaways for the Oilers to Seattle's eight. 10, giveaway, or 10 takeaways for Edmonton to the Kraken's seven. At the end of the night, it is a 4-2 Oilers victory. It is 12 straight wins for the Orange and Blue. It is three straight losses for the Seattle Kraken, which is a team that wraps up a six-game road trip, five of those games coming out. East. All right, 780-218-9999 or via the nasty chat. We're going to get to as many texts and comments as we can. Let's bring in our game analyst, former NHLer, Matt Cassian. Uh, Cass, that was a bad first period. I'm not, I have no qualms saying a bad first period. They did not look good. And then they really, really dialed it in in the second and third. Where uh, did you notice some deficiencies in that first period? And then what can you say about the way the team played the last 40 minutes? Did I ever notice some deficiencies in that first period? That was a that was a rough, rough first period. I mean, it was almost like they they expected Seattle to come in and just be sick and just kind of hand them the game. Like it was, I I like that they're trying to be aggressive, but it was it was aggressive to the point of of 
just giving up way too much in your own end. So what you give up two breakaways in a two on one in one yep. period, yep. which which is uncharacteristic. Now we can say over the this this winning stretch, they haven't done that. And then all of a sudden they have a period where they do it. Um, I know Evander Kane, better game tonight, way more noticeable tonight. His first period wasn't very good. Um couple bad turnovers and and he wasn't the only culprit uh, by a by a long shot but it was it was just sloppy it was just sloppy it was it, it actually terrified me a little bit tom because i'm like well maybe today you know they've had a lot of really good games they've been scored on first a whole bunch of times maybe tonight is the night where they can't find a way to to flip that game and turn it around but right. they come out in the second period and all of a sudden they have some jump. They get that first one, and then you know I was like, okay, here we go. They they clean it up um, where they they didn't. I, I don't think they allowed a odd man rush in the second or third period. I'd have to double check on that, but um, certainly they didn't give up uh, two on one and two breakaways uh, for the rest of the game. So they clean it up. They stop trying to force everything and just expecting the offense to be there and they ground more back into how we've seen them play and end up winning a hockey game because of it so it it, it was a horrible start um but just like we've seen them do before uh the, on this stretch of 12 wins in a row tommy they uh they reel it back in and they find a way to win man i can't believe we're talking about a 12 straight victory for this team no, it's considering crazy. i always go back to the first month and a half and uh looking at it now and we're talking about an Oilers team, like I was talking about on the pregame show, that if things go their way and the LA Kings struggle, which they and they're they're losing two to one, uh, this could be a night where the Oilers climb into third in the Pacific and stay in third in the Pacific, unless LA has a big third period and gets a good comeback against the Nashville Predators. They trail two to one after two. But Cass, um, if you're Mark Stewart and Paul Coffey. What are you saying to your blue line maybe tomorrow during a video session? Because I know that last 40, like you discussed, like pretty good. And they didn't give up two on ones. The, the giveaways were limited, obviously, too. But that first period, there are some things there where you're like, hey, uh, what were you guys doing? Yeah, um, I mean you're gonna you're gonna break it down. I mean you, you won you won the twelve games, but you're gonna take a you're gonna take a little look see at some of that, and and I think it's more like not even just just picking the plays apart individually, um, but when you're doing your video and you're you're looking at things you could do better versus things you did well, because you always you, you know you do the good stuff too. You're probably gonna look at those and go like guys like this this is when we're not being successful these are the types of things we're doing and then you just show a couple of them and you don't harp on it you're not like calling everybody out and said you need to do this and you need to do that but but saying like guys like look look at these types of plays um you know trying to do a, a really no look pass behind your back uh you know is going to turn into an on man rush against you know this is the the type of awareness uh when we're, we get caught on a change or someone's in the middle of the ice like you're gonna you're gonna look at those things and and try to say okay um almost more than anything in, in being specifically like systems like you need to stand here versus here just saying like look at the difference in in the first period to the second period to the third period with the types of plays we're making and the, the way we're exiting the zone mm -hmm. and the way we're trying to put the puck to the net in the offensive zone versus just kind of throwing stuff and, and hoping it goes like, so you're going to break it down a little bit. You're not, I don't think you, you're certainly not going to nitpick on it, but uh, um, you're going to want to watch a little bit of that first period and more just as a reminder to say like, guys, when we're not successful, this is what we're doing. Right. And then you're looking at that second and you're looking at that third to say, you know, when we're playing well, um, it looks a lot different because it, it does, Tommy. I mean, the first period to the second period was completely, completely different. So, you know, if, if I, it wouldn't, you know, we want to give credit to the players, certainly, you know, sure. they're the ones yeah, that came course. out. Yeah. In that second, but also to the coaching staff to say, you know, whatever they did to calm the guys down after that first period and the leadership group as well inside that dress room to, to, to reset and to refocus. I mean, it was, a, it was a great job. Yeah, I mean, they they get that third goal, and it was the Kraken and Dave Haxtell that had to call a timeout for a reset and refocus. But at that point, it looked like the Oilers were starting to hit their gear and uh, and just put it in cruise control after that in a good way. So uh, Edmonton gets a 4-2 victory. Leon tries to settle the four-point night. And to those casts that were worried about Kane being – you know, promoted to the dry saddle line and McLeod being moved down to the third line. 
what would you say to them? Because I feel like now they feel reassured, but there might still be some, ah, oh, you know, like you said, Cass, Kane had a couple of giveaways or something's not right with Kane. And he was a game time decision. We didn't even know yep. if he was going to play. He was a guy that was a, a bit nicked up again. But uh, to those that had, you know, the question marks when they saw Kane get elevated earlier this week, uh, what would you say now, a couple games and a couple of days later? Yeah, well, he's he's starting to turn the corner. So whether that, you know, from a physicality standpoint, if it if it's ribs that that were healing, like they seem to be a little bit better. He did make some mistakes tonight. Um, he did turn, and even later in the game, I think there was one shift where I was kind of like, oh, that wasn't wasn't a great play there. So he he did turn it. It wasn't a perfect game from Evander Kane, but he was more involved and engaged, and he did look like he was he was moving okay, regardless of you know if it was just getting his. Uh, foot into a skate or, or whatever it was from that block shot you know he he looked he looked all right so it was I think a, a good game for him to maybe overcome a little bit so okay. you, you you don't have a great start to the game from a turnover standpoint but you you kind of stay engaged and it had a little bit of that feeling to the game like where it got it did get a little bit chippy later on and and, and that brings out I think the best in Evander Kane too so it wasn't I mean maybe I shouldn't say well it can bring out the best in Evander Kane. I don't want to say he was at his best tonight yet, but you know, finds a way to be on a line that is moving, that is that is generating, and and he contributes, and he's a part of that, which is which is good to see because there was such a long period where he was really really quiet, and you know, a better night tonight from Evander Kane. Yeah, and he does get on the score sheet as well. That's <clears throat> pardon me, worth noting. Picking up two assists plus one, a couple of shots, a couple of hits, and. Uh, did he wind up taking a face off? Yeah, he won a face off. He won. Uh, he's 100% on the dot and 16 13 uh, of work tonight for Evander Kane. So a multi point game there. Warren Fogel, the two goals. Uh, Dry Saddle, the four, like we mentioned. And uh, that line having themselves a nice little night. All right, let's get into the inbox 780 218 9999. I see a lot of happiness, a lot of jubilant Oilers fans, and rightly so. And then I, I'll take a look at the nasty, nasty chat. Looks like his nasty pleasant. chat's humming pretty good. It, I've got it, it up on my screen. It's it's moving pretty. It's pretty toasty in a good way. In a good way. I like that toasty in a good way. Uh, it is cold out there. The rookie just says third place, boys. Woo! Uh, Calgary Glad says evening, boys. The Oilers were a bit sloppy in the first. Calgary Glenn, I would just say flat out sloppy. But oh, yeah. that's nice of you to say a bit sloppy. Uh, Calgary Glenn follows up with, but took over staying in the second, uh, dry settle, a beast offensively, especially defensively tonight. His back checking was incredible tonight. The orders didn't give Seattle much in the third Calgary Glenn agree. Uh, this text just says daddy, like I get it. <laughs> Jeffy, Jeffy chimes in and says, why does Steve Kazari have a job? Seriously? The dude. Has to be the worst ref in the game. Steve Kazari took a puck to the ribs, I think, today. Uh, he gets a lot of Oiler games, Cass. I don't know how the league determines. Is it regional for them where the refs I think live? they kind of – it's regional, and then they try yeah. to move them around. So you have guys yeah. you get more often than not, um, um, which which I understand. I mean, you don't – you know, from a travel standpoint, you kind of keep guys in the same area. But, yeah, it was uh, it was a tough one for those guys tonight, I think, on both sides. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> both sides of it um yeah. someone asked in the nasty chat you know why was there a three minute penalty i didn't understand the three minute penalty because there was a five minute major that got upheld and because ekholm then took a a two uh when he rushed in and and, and kind of started the whole scrum yeah after gord was uh was uh right in skinner's face and, and bumped him a little bit so he you know out of that scrum ekholm got the two minutes now because it's not like a traditional the five minute which which we saw um it's not like a traditional offsetting you know the, the five minute being a bigger penalty a more impactful a major penalty as it were um you know that trumps it so you end up with a, a three minute power play if you score guy stays in the box no one right. comes out which is which is what we saw uh excellent explanation of that i always need a refresher in those things but um, yeah, uh, that was, Gord was frustrated trying to stir it up. I get it, but, and Yanni Gord's not a very big guy and the Viking Matias at is a big guy. Um, you don't like to really see that, but I understand. No, I mean, it, it was, that's a, that's a five minute major. You jump, yeah. you he jumped. jumped, he took a good run, a healthy he didn't, run. Didn't yeah. plant the feet. He jumped, um, clearly was frustrated and frustrated with McDavid off that, which I didn't think that cross check from McDavid was that bad. It was more of a, 
more of a push. And I think what, what really made him frustrated is he got hit. Like he got nicked by something. It looked like, I don't, I don't know whose stick it was yeah. on the way down, uh, like from the cross check, which is kind of what set him off a little bit. And and I was wondering earlier in the shift, cause you saw him going after McDavid a little bit, trying mm-hmm. to, I mean, he's trying to fight him, which I mean, was not going to fight. Like, come on, no. not going to happen. But, but he was right. that, that frustrated. Um, part of me was like, I wonder if he does something stupid. And, and he did. And it was a five it minute major. True. You, you, Jump like that, you catch a guy high, five minute major. Now, yep. Tommy, do you think he's going to get suspended? Probably not. My guess is no. What do you think? Maybe a fine. Fine, five thousand. Maybe a fine, five thousand. Yeah. Maybe twenty five hundred. Yeah, there yeah, goes some easy. per diem. That's yeah. about it. Yeah, that's about it. Uh, this one is a little bit of an aside. It comes from Weird G in the nasty chat. Fittingly, Weird G says, "I think Cassian's new hairdo is rivaling Tommy's. Tommy may need to up his hair game." With a <laughs> winky face, Cass, you've been getting a lot of compliments for your haircut today. Usually, when I, I I get them when I like get it fresh, because I mean, especially when I was sick, it's not like I was going to get a going to get a haircut. And someone yeah. asked who my my barber was. I've I've been going to the same person for like seven years. Give them a shout she, out. I no. Oh, you don't want because give it I away? don't want her to get too busy. She's busy enough. She's busy enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah, her name's Sam. I'll give it that's that's all that's yeah. all you get, but uh, uh, no, I've been going to this in, in fantastic. If you like like bald fades, like where you, you get a little bit of fade, she's she's yeah. absolutely fantastic. So, but um, no, I, I don't like sharing, so I probably should, Sam. Yeah. Maybe I know you're not listening tonight, but uh, maybe at some point when I okay. when I feel I'm ready to let other people uh take up share the, time. the secret, yeah, yeah, share the uh, secret. Uh, Chantal, I don't think is very happy with me. First of all, I need a haircut desperately. I've got these side things going and uh, sh- I try to like schedule. I had to reschedule like twice and she's like, I'm going on vacation. I'm back on the 26th. So I'm, I'm stuck in limbo. Weird G cast looks fresh. I look like a sack of, you know, what? Tommy, just seven. go get another perm. Yeah. Uh, funny. That came up in the press box today. <laughs> Not a chance. Uh, all right, let's get to some more texts about the hockey game and the 12 game winning streak. Eden says this team is a wagon. The franchise record keeps getting extended. We passed the Kings. And if I'm not mistaken, this is the eighth game during this 12 game stretch where the Oilers have given up the first goal, but come back to win the game. Cass, are they playing a dangerous flirtation or having a dangerous flirtation with uh, disaster when they go down in these games? Or, you know, like Eden's alluding to, uh, they've done it so many times in this stretch where it's like, well, We'll probably come back on you. Like, yeah, how I do you assess that. It's it's a little bit of both, and and I don't want to say it's playing a dangerous game because anytime you have a twelve game win streak, it's not going to be a perfect twelve. Like, not not every game is going to be a perfect game. Good, point. and and we've seen that. You know, you, you look back, and I'll just throw back to that one Chicago game when you're playing not a great team, and and Stuart Skinner kind of robs robs Chicago and and saves you the game. You get fifteen shots on net. Like, like it, they're not, they're not all going to be perfect games. So are they are they playing a dangerous game when they're down a goal and and they get scored on first? Well, well, yeah, you are because statistically you're less likely to win when you get scored on first. Right. With that being said, as we've talked about numerous times, and and both we have used this language, you, you, you know, Knobloch has used this language, Drysaddle has used this language, the patience and the maturity that this team has shown in those moments to, to not fold and to have that stick to it attitude to be like, okay, like this isn't ideal, but we're just going to keep working. We're going to, you know, and, and they did not in the first period, but they did in the second period, we're going to get back to our game and we're going to just chip away at this thing. I mean, good teams do that. The, you, it's, you know, you call it the, 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 whether it is patience or maturity, finding a way to win stick to itiveness, perseverance, whatever you want to call it. Um, good and great teams find ways to win games when they're not perfect. So, so are they flirting with disaster? Y- yeah, a little bit, but I don't even necessarily want to call it disaster because now you've won 12 games in a row. So y- yes, because you know, sometimes if you're playing really good teams, they're going to take advantage of you and you're not mm-hmm. going to be able to work your way back into it, but they have continually found ways to get work, work, work their way back into it. So it, you know, and it's almost like it, it is what it is at this point. I'm ha- just happy they've won 12 games in a row. Incredible that they put together this winning streak yeah. and uh, playing like the way they should have from the outset. But, you know, 
Better late than never, Cass, I suppose. Uh, Mike in Thunder Bay says 12 wins. 12? That's the same number of studio albums that the Beatles had. Coincidence? This team is obviously in the GOAT conversation. So Mike in Thunder Bay, very, very uh, pleased with his team right now. Uh, this one from Liquid Beaver says, thought the order's forecheck in the second and third period was excellent. Also really liked the pack mentality in the scrums. Cass, I know you can appreciate yep. the pack mentality and them sticking up for one another. Yep. I'm always a fan of that. And it's, it's you know, because there's not very many fights anymore and that's not really the, the league and that's not really the game at this point. There There is that, you know, just, just get in there and grab somebody mentality or there needs to be that like where it's not you're not going in and getting in a line brawl typically right. that's not happening but it's just saying hey i'm gonna go grab someone to make sure that that my buddy doesn't get a glove in the face or a stick in the face or or you know elbow in the face or whatever it is and and i'm just gonna make sure that we're all okay here i mean hey you know teams teams do that good teams do that and and teams that i think play well and play well together do that they care about one another uh do that and Tommy, I think, you know, from a physical standpoint, I I like the third, not just because of that, but, and, and maybe more than the third, I like the set second too with this, but Edmonton's, um, Edmonton's big guns in McDavid and Dreisaitl have both been, and, and Dreisaitl maybe not, not all the time the last, you know, even over their win streak, it, it's been more McDavid, but I thought, I thought he did tonight. Um, they have been physical. Yeah. And they have been engaged. And they have been, you know, they've been in those scrums too. And it's it's like when you're when your veteran guys and your skill guys, you know, they're the ones that are leading the charge in that. Your best players are leading the charge in that. I mean, it's just to, to me, it's a sign of a healthy group, like where guys just care about each other. Yeah. And, and we could go and, and talk about, you know, what we've seen from the Toronto Maple Leafs and Austin Matthews at times and some of the criticisms that get leveled at that. But you know, there is something to it where you don't need to go in and take a penalty and do something dumb, but just being there for your buddies and for your friends and your teammates, that's important. The Oilers went at 4-2 to two over the Seattle Kraken, give them a dozen straight wins. And Stuart Skinner, I think that's his ninth straight victory uh, in his last nine starts. Uh, 780-218-9999 or in the nasty chat. I'm laughing at the nasty chat, Cass. Like, as you're going through your breakdowns, I'm kind of like reading and I'm like, okay, I got I to gotta <laughs> mention some things here. So... Uh, keep those coming in, and uh, we will get to some clips as well. I'm laughing at you, Nasty. Smash the thumbs up button, too, if you're watching on the YouTube channel. And if you're listening on your way home from the game on the TuneIn app or just our audio stream, thank you. Get us at the uh, inbox, 780-218-9999. Okay, this one came in from Skeptical. It says, Tommy, Matt, Smokes, let's go. And uh, I think that's a perfect segue to try to get YouTube Trev in because him and Zach to come are in studio holding things down at our HQ. We were having some issues with talk back between myself and Trev. Trev, are you there? Hello. Can anyone hear me? Oh can, yeah. Oh good. Oh, thank God. Here. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to say sorry about that boys. I'm a little bit of a perfectionist and uh, the, the, yeah, I'm upset too. That, that was really annoying. And I seen some of the chat saying, Oh, Trev slack and Trev slack. And no, that's not the case. Technology was just not in my favor uh, tonight. Actually, it hasn't been really working, but uh, the Oilers win, and that's what matters, and that's what we're talking about right now. 12 straight. I said in the pregame that uh, the Oilers could join elite company. Uh, there's been seven teams in NHL history that have uh, reached, you know, the the 12 game winning streak, and uh, the Oil well, there's eight now, boys. Let's go. So the Oilers got it done. Was it pretty? Uh, you know, in the first 20, not not so much, but it, it was nice. You know, when McDavid's line, it wasn't really clicking tonight. Uh, but, you know, Dreisaitl, Kane, Fogel, you guys mentioned it. They really stepped up, so it's nice to see. Uh, the power play, you know, they were, you know, finally shooting the puck. Yeah, when you shoot the puck, good things happen, and that's kind of what happened uh, when they when they finally uh, scored there. So a lot to uh, like, I guess, near the end, uh, near the end of the game. Uh, I like the battle. I like the, you know, you talked about it, uh, a little bit of the feistiness. That was good to see. That always gets me off my feet. So it's exciting. The nasty chat's absolutely buzzing again, so let's keep it going, guys. I'm, I'm just, I'm so happy. 12 straight wins. Let's go. Look at that. It's yeah. the happy dude. Oh mm -hmm. man, it's so sick. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. I had to rant off there. But yeah, we're 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 good. Everything's good. The audio's good. And uh that's that's good. All right. Nobody you stay off of YouTube, Trev, if you've given YTT the gears. He's our baby. 
Thanks, Tom. And uh, we have Zach to come in there too. I don't think anybody's <laughs> getting mad at you. You got to hear this kid on on hot takes. He's won two straight casts. Yeah, double up. Fire. Yeah, double up. Yeah. That's pretty sweet. Amazing. I'm wearing the wearing the glove right now. Uh, I didn't uh-huh. bring gloves in. It's a cold ride home, but I got one glove, so that's nice. Oh my goodness, uh, you'll be just fine, YouTube Trev. Uh, all right, seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. We got a bunch of text. If you have any questions for Cass, let us know, and we will fire those off towards him. Uh, this one comes in says Tommy. The first period reminded me of the orders at the beginning of the season. But they buckled down the rest of the game. But also, DeHarnay has looked really solid on this streak. Just calm and cool, making solid outlet passes, tape to tape. Very impressed. That te- text comes in from KL. Uh, DeHarnay, Cass, I'm going to read out his stats just from tonight. We know he's not offensively uh, inclined. He, he has a handful of points this season. But I want to get your take on how the, the big, rangy D-man has kind of evolved here in his first full NHL yeah. season. So... A hit, three shots, 15-50 time on ice. I know he tried to get a few pucks through, but they got blocked ultimately top of the crease, I think it was. What do you see from Vinny DeHarnay as he kind of gets comfortable in the National Hockey League? Well, I think he looks way more comfortable than he did at the start of the season. Um, like, sure, the yeah. start of the season, just, just like everybody, just like everybody, he was struggling. He was struggling. I mean, he, he exposed a little bit, you know, some of this the speed issues we saw, and and I don't think he was playing very well. I think if we look really at like the last 20 games, really the two the two win streaks, if we look at that, he's just been kind of under the radar steady, like hasn't made a lot of mistakes, you know, hasn't got burned wide really. Um, yep. um that I can that I can think of off the top of my head right now, anyways. And and has just kind of gone about his business and and even more than that, I would say has been spectacular on the penalty kill, which is, which has been a huge part of this team turning it around and a huge part of this team finding ways to win games. I mean, again, tonight, the penalty kill was excellent, excellent yeah. night. And, and he's been a big part of that. So, I mean, I, I love the, the shout out for him because it's not like he's a guy that is going to get a lot of points. He's not, it's, it's not glorious what he does, but he's provided the team with some steady minutes, really steady minutes, Tommy, like it hasn't got overexposed. I mean, I can't remember the last time I thought like, oh, that was a really nasty shift from Dayarnay. Like he's kind of steadied himself out here. And whether that's confidence or development, whatever you want to call it, hey Tommy, he's been he's been playing some as far as is you know a, a, a you know player that you want your third pairing to play. He's been playing some pretty steady hockey. Grown into that role is that? Can we give him that? Yeah. That'd be fair. Yeah. Okay. Grown, developed, you, you know, developed. matured into it and call it what you will. I mean, he's, yeah. he's, he's playing steady with it. Yeah. Not a young guy, not a nope. young guy, but, uh, what is he? Vinny's 27. He's going to be 28 in a couple of months here. So, uh, yeah, good to give him some recognition. And, uh, I know he was taking some flack earlier in the season among others, obviously with things being so bad, but, uh, those, those, Voices have certainly quieted down quite a bit. EA texts in. EA says, Vegas is in sight, boys. Let's hope the stinker doesn't come against Calgary. Uh, A good segue there from EA. Calgary loses tonight in regulation to Toronto. Uh, So the Oilers will get a a pissed-off Flames team on Saturday night. It's a rivalry game. Big Saturday at the Saddle Dome. All that stuff. They're wearing their Heritage Classic jerseys. Both teams will be. So maybe a little fuel to the fire, for lack of a better term, and a bad pun, I apologize. And then you've got the Kings still trailing the Nashville Predators with nine minutes left in the third. Uh, Vegas, though, 4-1 with six minutes to go. They lead the Rangers looking at out-of-town scores. Um, If you're the Oilers cast, are you looking at the out-of-town scoreboard now, or are you still putting your head down and just grinding away? I think you're putting your head down and and you're saying 12 in a row, make it 13. I mean, that, that's what you're looking at now. Now, are you looking at it to say like, okay, you know, Calgary's behind us and they're chasing us and they're going to want to, yeah. they're going to want to win. Yeah. Um, yeah. You might be looking at that, but yeah, I, I think this group has really, and one of the things I think they've done well is they really have just focused on just the next night and, and even to go to tonight, you know, after the first period, they were like, well, let's throw that out. Let's not think about it. Let's not look at that. Let's just 
worry about our business and what we need to take care of. And I think that's the the attitude that they have had recently, and it's benefited them quite quite significantly, I would say. So I don't I don't think they're going to be scoreboard watching or standing watching. I mean, you you know, as a player, you always know. Like you're mm-hmm. and you're always going to look. You're going to see who's winning. You're going to see who's getting points, and you're going to see like you, you you are aware of what's happening around the league. I don't know anyone that plays in the league that isn't like it's just, it's it's your job to be aware. Um, but to sit and to overly think about it and to worry about it and to, to stress about it, I don't think these guys are at that point. They're just like, hey, let's just go win hockey games. Yeah. And if we do that, we're going to end up where we want to be or we're going to end up in a good position. So let's just worry about taking care of our business night in and night out and 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 trying to win. Now, you, you know, playing Calgary, team you hate, rivalry team. I mean, yeah, those, those, those games you're looking at, and, and you might look at Calgary and say, hey, they're, they're not only is this is a team that's chasing us, that's behind us, it's a division team, and we don't like these guys. So, I mean, you're, you're thinking about it a little bit, but you're not dwelling on the, you're not dwelling on the standings. Just go about your business, Tom. Go Dude, about your saying business. It's wor- yeah, it's working. Go about your mm-hmm. business is right. It's absolutely working. Tom Gazzola, Matt Cassian, YouTube, Trev with you. We'll get a cameo from Zach to come later on. In the show, it is the Oil Stream post game show. Edmonton, a 4 2 win over Seattle. Give the orders 12 straight victories. Seattle, three straight losses. If you want to text us, 780 218 9999. If you want to get into the nasty chat, whether it's make a comment or discuss certain things about the game and the team with other nasties, you can do that too. Uh, Cass is watching the nasty chat. I'm dipping into it a bit, but this text. I know you went over it a bit, Cass. Uh, it comes in from Havana Ben that says, I'm a former referee as well. Uh, so Havana Ben, who is a former referee, says, can you guys mention that the whole three-minute power play is an NHL rule just so parents aren't yelling at refs when their kids game, it's two minutes of four-on-four four and then three-minute power play because that's a Hockey Canada rule. Thanks. From Havana Ben, a former referee. Did you get there that? There we go. So yeah. Hockey Canada does it a little bit differently. Yeah. Um, fine. I mean, that's it's. I, I was I was fairly certain the NHL. That's how it worked, which which makes sense to me. I mean, if Hockey Canada is different, great. But don't yell. Yeah. Don't. I mean, you shouldn't be yelling. You shouldn't be yelling at minor hockey refs, anyways. Come yeah. On. yeah. It's a it's a tough job. Yeah. I dislike referees. I just don't tell them until. Well, they, you, yeah. you can just dis- dislike them all you want. Disagree yeah. with them all you want. Yeah. You know. You know. Talk with them about a call that you didn't like all you want. And, and, and to me, Tommy, it's the, the, the NHL refs and minor hockey refs, that's a completely different thing. Correct. So completely different. Where where a lot of the times, you know, minor hockey refs, they're they're kids too, and they're they're trying to earn some extra bucks and they're trying to help things out. And maybe they 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 generally like what they're doing and they like you know being able to help things function and move along. Yep. So like don't 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 just don't just don't you want to yell at NHL refs. Go ahead. Yes. Be my guest. I, you want to complain about them? Go ahead. Be my guest. I do it too. It can be really frustrating. They can be really horrible. Um, but yeah, don't, don't, don't yell to kids. That's dumb. All right. On a much lighter note, I want to share this with everyone. It comes in via text from Oily Sink, who shares a screen grab of a tweet. And uh, it's from someone named Ryan Donaldson at Mad Dog 81. This is a great, great tweet. And Cass, I think you can appreciate this. Oilers are now 25, 15, and 1 when Connor Brown doesn't score. <laughs> yes, he did miss a few games, but that, that's I good, like that's, that, though. That's, that's nice. That's pretty good. That's yeah. pretty good. Yeah. Uh, okay, a couple more here. Uh, this one says, hey, fellas, love the grit to come back and win. In saying that, unless Bouchard learns to defend, it is going to kill the Oilers in the playoffs. He cannot continue to make the kind of mental errors and in parentheses, that not a single other NHL defenseman has the luxury of getting away with. Uh, just my opinion, but his offensive upside does not offset his horrible defense. Uh, and then the follow-up text says, not speed issues, agility, but he has figured out gap control and boxing players out, and his 100-foot reach helps him knock the puck off the opposition and pick off crossing passes. He needs more us time. Bush bomb needs less. So that's in regard to Harney. But that first part there about uh, Bouchard's defensive play, Cass, what would you say to those in oil country that probably or or do have the same types of thoughts of that text? Yeah, have? well, I, I would have, when, when the Oilers were really struggling, I would have agreed with you completely in that his defensive game was absolutely in shambles. I It hasn't yeah. been in shambles 
last 20, 22 games, Bouchard's defensive game has not been in shambles. So has does he at times still make some mistakes? Well, yes. Yes, he yeah. does. But I would say he is largely largely cleaned up the types of mistakes that he was making at the start of the season. You know, we, we haven't seen him just completely miss a guy on the wrong side of his body in a one-on-one -on -one situation. We we haven't seen, you know, just these horrible uh, giveaways in his own end where he's holding onto the puck too long and then gets muscled off of it and then gets beat back to the net. Like we, we, we haven't seen those. So, I mean, I don't, I don't think he's getting away with all kinds of stuff that, most NHLers don't get away with because I don't think he's been making those types of mistakes. So I would, I would disagree on that side. Now I would also say that, that, you know, for, for a lot of players and, and I think we do Tommy and I know you do, we, we will critique them when we feel it's necessary. Of course is it, it, dry sidle falls into this camp as well. You know, extremely gifted offensively at times because of that, you give up a little bit defensively. Now, now, now there are times when those players need to lock it down. And there's times when they they you know you, they need to take the risk out of their game, and 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 Bouchard's one of those guys. I mean, he is mm. extremely gifted in the offensive zone, and the thing that makes him great in the offensive zone, which primarily is his patience with the puck, and and his his willingness to hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. There's the lane, there's the shot, or hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. There's the lane, there's the pass, um, or hold it, hold it, hold it. The guy just took a step too far. Now I can walk the blue line, and now yep. something's open. Um, it can at times get him into trouble in the defensive zone because pressure's coming. It's a different area of the ice. You have a wall behind you, so you don't have as much room to 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 navigate or to wiggle. And 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 you know he all of a sudden has too much pressure and there's no play there. Um, occasionally, yeah, that that happens. But I, I'm I don't know. I'm not I'm not jumping on that criticism right now for yeah. for Evan Bouchard. He he the last twenty to twenty three games has been really really good. I did think that he and Ekholm struggled in that first period, but yeah, after but that, everyone got did. better. Everyone yeah, did. That's, that is true. But a text in the nasty chat asking if Vancouver's still up. Yes. Uh, late in the third period, three and a half minutes left. They're up two one on Arizona. Nashville continues to maintain a two one lead over LA with four minutes left in the third. And then the golden Knights up four one on the Rangers with two and a half minutes left in the third period as well. A couple more texts. Uh, Cass, we'll keep you till we get to some uh, interviews, if that's okay with you. If you have any questions for Cass, let us know. He'll take a look ahead as well to Saturday night's tilt against the Flames at the Saddle Dome. Uh, this text comes in, and who is it from? Looney Len. Looney Len texts in and says, I can't believe it. I saw an EST hat in the wild at the game against the glass. Uh, yes, they are nice. floating around. I've seen a few out there, which is excellent. And uh, Cass, it sounds like a Wanik is getting ready to curate the next pop-up shop. So that'll, that'll be get coming ready. down the, the pike right away. Yeah. So get he's get ready, get ready. And, and like, it's, I, I don't know how to describe it. It's like he'll work with uh, Chelsea and the good, awesome crew over at the hive. And they'll pick certain items like polos or like a spring jack, stuff like that. Like he can pick 10 items or 15 items. They'll be available for a couple of weeks. You could buy them. And then when the sale or the pop-up shop is done, uh, they get manufactured and then they get sent out to everybody. So if, if there's people that didn't get in on the first pop-up shop, have uh, just learned about EST, were fans of, of 1260 and are like, you know what? I, I like these guys and uh, you want to get some swag. That's the plan going forward. I've had some people ask about that. And uh, guys like Cass rock the hat. And did you get like a hoodie too? Like I got one. It looks good. It's good. It, all the stuff looks really good. No, yeah. they do it. They do it. They, they do a great job. So yeah. yeah, get your, get your swag. Uh fish tank wants slippers. I think there's thousands <laughs> of things that the hive has. They might even have slippers. They I probably do. Yeah. Joaquin, yeah. Joaquin would probably want some. Uh, Okay. Shall we go here, Cass? It's our old friend Randy. No, nope, let's hear it. We know him well from our time at uh, TSN 1260. He liked to to get in the mix on uh, the text line back in those days, and uh, he's chiming in. I I'm curious to read. I have it's just a nice block, but uh, here we go. This one from Randy, our old friend, says, "Guys, I am not trying to be the a hole texter, as I know my views are considered abrasive." 
because of my hate for uh, certain fan or fan pages and bloggers. But for consistency's sake, I assume there will be a whole segment dedicated to how offside reviews are a useless joke because the review tonight got called off because of a skater that wasn't involved in the play at all. And at 3-3, that's a massive swing. But regardless of it benefiting the Oilers, like I mentioned last week on the Oilers goal called back, I assume it'll be spoken about with the same passion that offside reviews are terrible, even though it benefited the Oilers this time. No, just to be fair and consistent. I admire Randy for being consistent. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, here's, but here, so, so I'll, I'm going to be consistent in my argument in that that was, that was offside because you had a player that with his feet on the ice, it was like three feet over the line. So slow getting back to the bench, slow getting back to the bench. Very, very clear. If you watch that clip in real time, if you went to the video and you watch that clip in real time, you'd be like, yeah, that's offside. Hmm. And, and that to me is the difference where it's just like fractional, like a guy that, you, you know, he was lifting his back skid up because he was taking a stride and it was like a centimeter off the ice and you're calling it offside that, that those ones to me is like, okay, well now you're from, from a spirit of the rule, like a spirit of the rule, it, you know, the Seattle player. And I think it was Yamamoto. He was three feet over the line. Yeah. And that to me is like, no, that's pretty blatant and blatantly offside that was missed. And so from a spirit of the rule thing, it's like the ones that are just like, just tiny, 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 little, little, little way. It's nitpicky that I'm like, yeah, you know, this is, I don't like the, the offside challenges in this regard. I don't mind them for plays where it's like, yeah, no, that was totally blatant. And he was way offside and that should have been called immediately. So right again, that's, and that's, and I've kind of been, at least for me, Randy, I've been consistent with that. That's been my view the whole time. Yeah. Uh, actually, that that text from Randy didn't come with as much spice and heat. No, that as wasn't it vicious. Does. It was it was an opinion no. in a in a comment. No, no. Well, no. thank you for the text. No, that's Cass. I, I want to add to that eloquent uh, response by saying the offside that pisses me off the most, the ones that get reviewed and called back, is when we try to define possession. Yeah. And and like, like, did he have possession? Did he not have possession? That it's same, but that kind of the same thing. Like spirit, spirit of the rule. Yeah, where you're just like, you know, the spirit of the rule was to not have guys that were in behind in zone with their feet on the ice. Right, that's the spirit of the rule. And and you know, possession was not like, you know, he he well, he pushed it forward with his stick and then he moved his stick away. Did he have possession? Didn't he have possession? Like. That to me is, uh, yeah, I, I agree with you on that. Yeah, yeah, that just, it irks me. Uh, but that wasn't the uh, instance tonight or what happened. Uh, one text comes in from Andy, says, it's worth noting that McDavid was the first guy in both scrums in the third period. Leadership. I think Love Cass it. talked a little bit about that. Yep. Yeah, that's great. All right, uh, one last thing from Cass tonight. He's put in a, a full day's uh, effort, and uh, we're going to just get him on one more thing. And that is Saturday's matchup against the Calgary Flames. If they're going to make it lucky 13 against the Calgary Flames, how do they get it done, Cass? I think I think this is going to be a, a battle of a game. Um, if I if I look at this, and, and maybe it's true that the next one's always going to be the hardest one, um, but I, I I just feel like this is going to they're they are going to have to. I think Calgary's going to really be jammed up for this one, and I think you're should, going to have to be as well. Yeah, yeah, as they should be. Like I I just think. It's it's uh, for the Edmonton Oilers like you are really, really going to have to bring it the type of game where you can't have a first period like you had tonight. Um, can't have a first period like you have tonight. It will take a full 60 minutes. I anticipate it to be a, a tight game. And I think, again, Calgary is going to absolutely bring it. So Edmonton's going to have to as well. They want to end that streak for the Oilers. No doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, and they want to be the guys. They, they yep. want to be the guys to do it. Yep. Yep. We'll see if it happens. We'll talk about it on Saturday. Cast fantastic work as always. The voice sounding as good as the hair looks. May we're I getting say. there. Yeah, hey. I still there's occasional gravel in there a little bit, Tommy, but we're we're back. We You're are back, baby. Back. Yep. I love it. That's Matt Cassian, our game analyst, uh, bringing it like he always does tonight on the post game show. The orders four two winners over the Seattle Kraken. All right, YouTube Trev, uh, we do have some clips to get to. Where are we going here, pal? Yeah, let's uh, with two goals on the night and his brother in the audience. Uh, let's go to Warren Fogel. Here he is. Game, but we 
got to start with you pleading with the ref that you're trying to get your hat trick there when he gave you the penalty. Like, did you actually, you think there was a hope there? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, was, I was confused, to be honest, because I was, I was kind of thinking, like, read, read the game. Like, the only reason I was out there was uh, to get the hat trick, right? I'm not on the first <laughs> unit. Um, but I, I thought I got cross-checked and slashed, but I... Uh, I guess Steve saw it a different way. And you think maybe he should factor that in? I, I know you're normally not out. Here. Yeah, I don't know. I kind of said that to him, and then some other probably not right things. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I was obviously. Fired. But you know what? Happy we got the win, and um, you know this group keeps battling back and um, super calm, and and uh, you know hopefully we can we can uh, continue this. The the battling back's a great thing, but obviously you don't want to continue to put yourself in that hole. I think that's eight out of twelve that you've had come from behind victories. Yeah, for sure. It's uh it's obviously not ideal and you know, uh Nauber talked about it before the game and um, you know yeah, not ideal, but you know, this group keeps sticking with it, you know, we're doing a lot of the right things and you know, Stu was uh played a huge game again and you know that's what you need from your goaltender. How much pride do you take as a team at tie the franchise record ten consecutive games by allowing two or fewer goals? Wow, I, I, I didn't even know that. Um, you know, I think it's just a credit to everyone just buying in and, you know, taking a lot of pride and playing the right way. And, um, you know, this group was down uh, at, at rock bottom. So, you know, a lot to uh, climb back and, you know, try to build each day. What does it mean to have a game like that when your, your bros here? What can you tell? Older, younger brother? Like uh, that that's my older brother by uh, two years. And, uh, you know, honestly, I probably wouldn't be here if it wasn't for him. Um, you know, constantly mini stick battles. Uh, letting me play road hockey with him and you know I definitely get my uh, competitive drive just from battling with him throughout the years so you know he's a huge part of my life and you know happy uh, he was here tonight to give me some luck and uh, hopefully he can bring me some more on uh, Saturday. If only you have his size eh? Yeah that's what we were saying uh, my uh, my parents and I uh, you know he's a big guy and if anyone's looking for a right hand D uh, looking for a comeback uh, you know he's ready to try out. Well, nice to put a little bit of separation between yourself and these guys. Yeah, for sure. This is a huge uh, divisional uh, opponent. You know, we're we're clawing, uh, clawing back, and and so are they. So um, you know, good that uh, you know we got the win, and we got another big matchup against Calgary. Are you sensing you guys are moving yourself up in the standings? How close are you watching? Uh, I think we're aware, but you know, we know there's a lot of work uh, left to do, and you know, just keep taking it day by day. You guys always play it cool on streaks, and we're not thinking too much about it. When does a 12-game win streak be something that you start to think about? Uh, you know, I'm not too sure. I haven't been on too many 12-game streaks in the NHL, but, uh, you know, I think as a group, you know, it's cliche. You, you just take it day by day, and, you know, we're a confident group right now, and, you know, we need to continue that. All right, there's Warren Fogel picking up a couple goals, uh, not hiding the fact that he was out there on Power Play 1 to get the hat trick, and also alluding to Steve Kazari by his first name, post game. Interesting. And then that ties into this text from Justin, who says, TG, I'm at the game with my son. Told him before puck drop, watch Kazari. He will be the star of the show tonight. What happened? And uh, I, I love it. So, uh, yes, uh, Justin, you called it. And uh, there you go. You got Warren Fogel talking about Kazari. Not in a bad way, but just pointing some things out, if you will. Uh, this one, uh, in regard to the uh, offside that we were talking about earlier, says, easy solution to offside, eliminate possession terms, Altogether, make it a, it is offside if any single players, both skates, break the plane of the blue line prior to the puck clearly crossing the blue line first. That's a way to do it. Um, we know the NHL likes to uh, make things complicated. And uh, Strummy, oh, I like this. Strummy sent in a couple of texts and said, Tommy, if you get a chance, I've got a tweet uh, about a guy that spilt beer and the other guy that bought my boy a jersey. Uh, his name is Sheldon. So shout out from Strummy and us to Sheldon for buying uh, Strummy's boy a jersey. Is that a McDavid? Is that a McDavid Strummy, or is that a? It might be a dry sidle, but uh, Strummy adds uh, there was a hundred percent cross check in the corner and then slash up the ice. Uh, yeah, I <laughs> love it, Strummy. Uh, all right, YouTube Trev. Anything else before we get to? Any more clips? Are there any more clips? Oh, there are. Okay, what do we have here? Yeah, with uh, two apples on the night, here is the shirtless Evander Kane. Games, but your team's showing a real nice resilience here, so where's kind of that line between wanting it to stop but also being happy with your ability to do that? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to win uh, 12 games in a row, you're going to 
be down in games, and uh, we've we've done it a couple of times in this win streak, and um, you know we've we've kept teams, uh, you know, two three goals. What did you make of uh, just uh, the atmosphere? Of fans seem so uh, just excited to be a part of this win streak and trying to you know cheer you on and, and do their part. Yeah, yeah, we've uh, we haven't had a lot of time at home, um, so uh, to have a couple of games and kind of finish off. Uh, at home here before the break uh, is nice, and obviously uh, we love playing in front of our home fans. A lot of fireworks in this game. What did you make of the, of the third period? Yeah, I mean, uh, it's NHL. You're going to have uh, guys that are feisty. Um, you know, obviously we didn't love the hit on Eki there, uh, but um, I'm sure we'll see these guys again. Your thought on the on the line between you, Leon, and Warren? There's a lot of size there, and kind of what you think is working. Just get an opportunity. Leonard, you've been kind of battling nagging injuries uh, here and there all season. Can you, how important or how welcome are you for get that break coming up? Uh, do you need some time off? Uh, just trying to feel better each and every day. Do you, you guys usually play it pretty cool with these streaks. And, you know, we're just trying to play it day by day and all that. But you got a 12-game win streak here. When does it become something that, you know, it's pretty cool? When do you start to... Think about it more. Um, I don't know if we really think about it as a, as a group in terms of. Uh, I think maybe at the end of the season or you know when your career is over, you think about some win streaks you've had over the over the years. Uh, obviously, this is the one I this is the longest one I've ever been a part of. Um, but uh, you know we want to keep it going uh, as long as we can. We we uh, didn't get off to a great start, so uh, you know obviously this streak has propelled us into a position where we we want to be and and uh, you know. We want to catch some teams that are still ahead of us. Maybe a thought on the fact that, you know, during this streak, your power play has not carried your team. Uh, I would say, you know, Connor McDavid's played very well, but he's not had a bunch of five-point nights. You guys have made a lot of points up here without two of the traditional things that wins game for you, games for you. Yeah, I, I think uh, it's a good template um, because when it counts uh, in the postseason, um, you know, you can't rely on your power play to, to win your series and, and, and win games each and every night. Uh, you know, you got to do it five on five, and um, it's definitely nice to see that uh, that happen uh, throughout this 12-game win streak so far. Vander, uh, pride night here. How, how important is it to this team and to, to, to show this rink as being a welcoming, inclusive place? Yeah, um, you know, ever since I've gotten here, uh, the city of Edmonton and, and uh, this organization has, has always been... Uh, open and, and welcoming and inclusive and uh, obviously uh, with a night like tonight uh, that was no different so it was great to be a part of all right there's a vander kane who the hell is that guy it's zach to come uh two points for kane and uh the others get the job done two for four on the power play by the way they updated that so uh, the power play does get a couple tonight okay there's zach to come that's what he looks like he's in uh the producer's chair and uh, we're going to get to some business. What are you doing throwing up gang? We're going to gang signs? What? No, I was just putting my hand up. I was saying hi. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, was, okay. All right. Uh, time now to get to the Damon Bunting Remax Elite Player of the Game. Damon Bunting, consistent top producing realtor in Greater Edmonton among and among Remax Realtors. He and his team love to help you find that right home or make the move from your current one. Community driven. Damon understands what it takes to make a difference in our city. Check him out, damonbunting.com, or visit his Instagram at damonbunting real estate. So if you're looking to get into the market, maybe you want a condo downtown by the arena, and you know that the prices are good right now, and you don't really have a real estate agent, well, give Damon Bunting a call and check him out. All right, without further ado, it is Zach Decum's debut on the Oil Stream post game show. He gets the Damon Bunting Remax Elite Player of the Game. Zach Decum, welcome to the program. Do your thing. Thank you so much. You know, it was uh, it was a back and forth game. It was a bit sloppy for us in the first period, and watching oh, did you it, play it was tonight? a bit tough. Hey, did you play tonight, Zach Decum? Oh. See, I say we because, you know, I, I grew up as an Oilers fan. I just say we. It, uh -huh. it runs through my blood, right? The orange okay. and blue. I don't even have red blood, okay? I've is, grown up an Oilers Trooper fan. Is Cooper looking at you right now? Is he shaking his head? No, no, no. He's just really? hanging out. I, I've always said we forever, and everybody gets okay. confused, even Maddie today. But the right. Oilers today, okay. There you they go. Had a, Good. Young broadcaster, not on anybody's team. I'm 
I'm not biased at all I'll on my own stream whatsoever. Up. Sure. And, you know, Warren Fogle, he was very noticeable. He had five shots, and I don't like to call him Warren Fogle tonight. I like to call him scoring more goals because he had two. He scored two goals, and it was a big night for him. And it was in between him and one other player. I, I don't want to mention it because Who? I'm just giving it to him. Well, Say it's, it. it's got to be Kane. It's got to be Kane. He had he had two points, and it was nice to see him. He he was out there, and you could see that he was trying, and he got two assists, so it was a good night for him and Fogel. But Fogel's the guy. He's the guy for tonight. Would you say he's the Damon Bunting Remax Elite player of the game as picked by Zach to come? Yes, 100%. Good work, Zach to come. Nicely done. All right, there he is. There is our practicum student, Zach to come. Doing some good work, uh, learning the ropes from YouTube, Trev, and uh, getting in the player of the game. Uh, give him a welcome. And, uh, <laughs> oh, I love it. Canadian do 95 says, old man Gazzola shouting at clouds. <laughs> uh, uh, Zedmo says, sure, Tommy's on team six o'clock or logger. I love that team. Uh, Mick Fosidal says, uh, spec Gazzola. <laughs> There's a there's a standard to uphold here as members of the media. Come on. Uh, and then Oily Sink says Tommy is just beaming right now. Yes, I love when uh, we get new faces and voices on our station, and that's what that's what you do a practicum for. Is you're an up and coming broadcaster, you got to cut your teeth somehow, and you can't do it without getting some reps in. So great to have Zach to come on there. Can we get YouTube Trev on? Let's get YouTube Trev on. Trev, are you back in the driver's seat? Are you going to let Zach to come uh, take this ship into the harbor? What are we doing here? You tell me. Are you back? No. There he is. Oh, no. You got to turn on your mic, Zach, to come. Trev's gone. He left you, didn't he? No, he's right here. Rookie oh, mistake, right though. There. I didn't turn my mic on. That's so one thing you learn. All right. Where's Trevor? Let's see Trevor. He's right here. Get in there, Trev. Yeah, we're Get Trevor. I just want to ask Trev something. Take it, take it, man. There he is. All right, YouTube Trev. What are we doing? There what are we doing? All right, how how's Zach to come doing? Give us the update. I'm getting called an old man here for yelling at him. No, no, it was funny because uh, it was it was my you know when I first started here at EST, I said uh, the first game uh, actually, Tommy here. Let me change the name here while I'm. Uh, well, I'm talking, but yeah, the first game, I remember I was like, I was saying, I was like, oh yeah, like we, we need to be better. We need to get these uh, pucks in deep. And you're like, we, we, do you play for the team? And I'm like, uh, no, I, I guess I don't there, Tommy. And, uh, so all, not all, I wouldn't say all game, but, uh, tonight Zach to come was saying, oh, we need to play better. And I was like, I didn't want to say anything. I was like, oh, I gotta, I gotta save it for Tommy to say this. So, oh, yeah. you set me up. Yeah, yeah, you I did. Knew it. Yeah, oh, I did. Boy. Well played. <laughs> I respect the hell out of that. Uh, yeah, that was uh, good. Greg in the nasty chat says, "Old man Tommy taking his mentor role very serious. I want him to do well. I want Zach to come to become one of the best broadcasters in all of the land. Yeah, as we like to say. So, yeah." Um, Man, and he's <laughs> he's he's well on his way. I've uh, listened to some of his play by play, and uh, yeah, 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 he's he's really solid. So he did, uh, yeah, his first appearance on camera way way better than me. I, I I think I said like thirty ums and about fourteen you knows, and no, his acticum was really solid. So kudos to him. He he crushed it nice. for sure. Nice, yes, he did. He did a good job. I was just giving him the gears. He did a very good job. Great to have him on. Uh, we did get a text from Cal in the park that said, "Hey, Tommy." I didn't see the game, but I'm listening to Knobloch's comments on Kane. Made me think he isn't a fan. Thoughts? Well, you heard Kane say, uh, just got an opportunity or something about opportunity, making the most of opportunity. I was like, oh, Frosty. So do we have Chris Knobloch by any chance? Uh, yeah, I didn't check there, but I can uh, I can check right now here. Uh, because if, if we do, I might. Yeah, no, no, still no. Still no. Okay, so we'll have to review it tomorrow on the the Nielsen show, and then we'll go over it as well on uh, the oil stream at noon. So interesting. Maybe there's a little bit of a back and forth there, but uh, I did catch Kane say something about ah opportunity, and I was like, oh, interesting. And he was kind of frosty a little bit there. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. But hey, he just got elevated back into the second line. 
had a multi-point game, played 16 minutes tonight. Um, let's keep an eye on it. Let's yeah. just say that. I uh, Yeah, I missed the post game, but uh, or I, I missed his interview. That's when me and Zach yeah. come. We're, we're switching there. But um, yeah, I'll have to look because I, I seen your reaction. You, you were like, oh, like that was interesting. And so, yeah. uh, like, I don't know. I, I really don't know what he could be. I mean, he's got a few. I'm not sure. He's had a few uh, in the last recently, right? He said a few things. Mm-hmm. So, uh, like, uh, the last two games have been his best games in in a while, I'd say. And he's got elevated minutes, so I don't really know why he'd be be complaining. He got two apples tonight, six hundred points in his career, you know. Yep. So, um, yeah, I don't I don't know what he could possibly <laughs> be complaining about, but that's definitely something to keep an eye on. I think so. Yeah, yeah, interesting for sure. All right. <laughs> Yes, thank you, Hampton. Steve sent in the gif of uh, Grandpa Skinner waving and yelling at the cloud and says, Tommy to Zach. Uh, yeah, uh, for Zach to come. <laughs> yeah, He'll no. Be just fine. Oh, yeah, 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 fine. yeah. He's, he's a trooper. He's fine. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sam, uh, Sam, the oil fan, says, Hey, Tommy, do you wear pants with the upper suit or you let things run wild? I am wearing full suit right now. I am wearing full suit. Uh, okay. The orders get the win. Over the Seattle Kraken, 4-2. to two. Give them a dozen in a row. Seattle is uh, losers of three in a row. They return home after an extended road trip. The Oilers will head off to Calgary tomorrow. They take on the Flames on Saturday. They'll be wearing their Heritage Classic jerseys. Trev, anything else you want to – are you signaling me there? Nope, you're good. Yeah, no, we're uh, good. Yeah, that's, that's going to do it for the Oil Stream postgame show. And uh, – Let's see if they can run it to 13. A big thank you to everyone who tuned in, texted in, watched, all that good stuff. Got in the nasty chat. There you go. Trev's trying to figure out how to count to 13 with that big mustache of his. And uh, for Zach to come, he did a great job on the player of the game. For YouTube, Trev, for Matty Cass, and I'm Tom Gazzola saying thank you. As always, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Have yourselves a great night, everyone. Ciao, ciao.